very, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and on behalf of Schneider Electric and our partners at Microsoft, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to the audience present with us here today. I hope I'm audible and clear. Uh, OK, looks like I am. I'd like to remind you of a few housekeeping pointers here. Please keep yourself on mute. There is a chat box and I would urge you to drop your questions or comments on the chat box. We will have days at the end of the sessions, so uh, hold on to them if you if you wish. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Bidisha Nagraj and I lead the marketing, digital and communication portfolio at Schneider Electric in India. And today we will be talking about the buildings of the future and how they are transitioning from not just being smart, but to being autonomous. Schneider Electric and Microsoft coming together in a webinar. I'm sure that's a question most of you would like to ask. Let me set up the context and the agenda here. We will begin with a virtual fireside chat with two extremely eminent thought leaders in the business, after which we will go over a short presentation on this subject. Before I move on, I would like to uh, put a few thought starters out there. Uh, you know, we are living in a fast changing environment with high degrees of uncertainties. Our requirements are changing, trends are changing, and with that, the way we work is changing. We have technologies like AI, IoT, big data that not only keep us stay connected, but also provide insights and forecasts to help prepare us for these kind of uncertain times and give us the technological advantage needed in this times and in this competitive world. The same goes for the building segment as well. Today and in the coming months and years, remote maintenance has become relevant. A connected facility that can be monitored and analyzed from a remote location gives the owners the insights into their building operations as they need. The power of condition based maintenance and predictive analysis gives the facility managers the tools needed to ensure operational efficiency without compromising occupants well-being and comfort, even with reduced workforce. Ladies and gentlemen, today's webinar focuses on how Schneider Electric's EcoStructure Open Architecture Platform with the advisors as the top layer, along with Microsoft Azure Cloud, have come together with a vision to enhance the customer experience and make the buildings not just smart, but autonomous as well. Schneider Electric being pioneers in the space of energy efficient and sustainable smart buildings brings in the industry expertise, while Microsoft being technology leaders brings the intelligence of digital technologies that provide the base for digital services platform. To, do, to talk more on the subject and for this virtual fireside chat, I'm extremely excited to have with us two eminent thought leaders from the industry. Without further ado, let me introduce you to our eminent panelists today. Mr. Anand Maheshwari, President, Microsoft India. Um, Anand leads Microsoft's engagement with policymakers, customers, and business partners, and is responsible for all products, solutions, service, and support offerings in India. He works towards making the company's mission of empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more and align with India's inclusive growth agenda. He's committed to supporting government entities and organizations in India progress on their journey of digital. Anand has held senior leadership positions in Honeywell and McKinsey. Our next panelist, Mr. Anand Chaudhary, Zone President, Managing Director, Schneider Electric India. Anil is a power sector veteran with over three decades of experience in energy and the infrastructure segment. A strong votary of the usage of technology and smart grid initiatives, Anil brings with him extensive learning of digitization of the power sector. In his over 30 years of experience, Anil, Anil has held various leadership positions based out of Europe and India. He champions the cause of energy efficient and green technologies and besides other achievement has been conferred with the highest French civilian distinction, Knight of the Legion of Honor by the President of Republic of France. Thank you, Anand. Thank you, Anand, uh, for being here today. And I'm really looking forward to having a very interesting conversation with the two of you. 
So let's get cracking with the questions right away. Anand, my first question is to you. Um, in the last few months, uh, we've had to radically change our social behavior. Uh, we had to adopt to the new normal in an unprecedented manner. Uh, uh, my que question is, as a technology leader, how did you and your organization finish both of meeting the expectations of your employees and your question, uh, customers? I would love to hear your insights, Anand. Over to you. Thank you, Bidisha. Just checking first if you can hear me clearly. Yes, all good. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. So first up, uh, great to be on this panel along with Anil. Uh, it's it's fantastic to to uh, further the partnership that the two companies have. But just to come back to your question, uh, as you said uh, about the employees and customers, I'll add just one more stakeholder. There is the communities that we live in. Mm -hmm. So. At Microsoft, I would say our priority uh, is to ensure the safety of our employees, of course, uh, protect the health and well-being of the communities in which we operate and live, uh, and then also be very focused on providing the digital capability uh, and infrastructure required uh, by our customers to support them and keep them uh, in every phase of this crisis uh, which I uh, would summarize into three phases, that is respond, rebound, and reimagine. So let me talk about each of these three stakeholders separately. First, let's talk about the employees and how do we empower them. First, I think it's just creating a flexible and an inclusive environment that supports the employees. Each of us have different situations at our own homes as we are operating from home and being very aware of what those situations could be and being flexible so that everybody can take their own decisions at this time is the start because I think that empathy uh, is the foundation on which you begin. Uh, tailoring our benefits program then to really support remote work. Uh, everybody needs different kinds of benefits you need flexibility. I think many uh, emotional well-being uh, of the employees and therefore providing tools, providing capabilities uh, that uh, and even resources that they could potentially use uh, at this point uh, is very, very important. And finally, having very open communication, both uh, in one on one and one to many situations uh, where we can truly understand what's happening. So that's really, I think, the cultural ethos of Microsoft coming together. Uh, to support the employees. You would notice I didn't talk about the tech because the tech is there uh, and, and we would we would definitely use that in enabling the remote work. Now let's talk about how do we support the front lines and the communities uh, in fighting back against the COVID and also supporting them in this crisis. Number one is to help uh, the governments, the healthcare institutions, the educational institutions to continue what they're doing and also be uh, enabled to fight back uh, in this situation. Specifically, calling out the institutions where I think it's not just the frontline is being used multiple times, but also the uh, the multiple people coming together to support the frontline. And how do you bring data, AI, and other capabilities uh, in other than just the uh, the uh, remote capabilities to work? Then I think it's supporting nonprofits with very custom solutions. Nonprofits, uh, institutes, and uh, organizations are doing a lot of good work. How do we support them? Uh, helping the small businesses recover with, with inclusive tech that can enable them very quickly to get back on their feet because they were not enabled like many of the big companies uh, to start with. Uh, and finally, I think it's scaling. What we forget is that it's not so easy for everybody to get on uh, to the platforms and start using them. As in the best example that I think many of us have seen is schools. Neither were the teachers ever trained to do this, and the students were definitely not uh, ready to do something like this. And nobody uh, initially felt that, listen, training was required. So we actually spent a lot of time training teachers. How do you use these platforms uh, to run your classrooms? Finally, let me come to customers since you uh, focused on that is how do you enable the work from home and remote capability of all the customers? The, the productivity has to go up uh, in, in this time, and that's been our focus. As everybody was working from home, we were enabling it. Uh, the data and analytics, 
uh, that you come, uh, you bring in this time to enable companies to use that capability to, pre to predict and minimize risk uh, for themselves uh, and their, uh, their employees. Uh, finally, uh, I think it's really supporting uh, organizations with uh, tools like Microsoft Power Apps, uh, where they can really disseminate information, do the crisis management through those tools. And the bottom line to all of this is security. Uh, for us, security, privacy, uh, transparency is inbuilt into our platforms. And as we go along, that trust factor will be very critical uh, as, uh, as we go forward. Uh, thanks, Anand. I think that was very, very insightful. And uh, I think you summed it up uh, uh, by saying that respond, rebound and reimagine is really the cornerstone of the way you're looking at the situation. Uh, thanks for that. Um, I move on to Anil. Uh, Anil, the next question is for you. Uh, in similar lines of what Anand uh, had to share, you know, with all these very fundamental changes we are living in these days, uh, will be great to hear from you as to how Schneider Electric is looking at making a difference, you know, to its employees, to its customers and community at large. So Anil would love to hear your thoughts on that. Thank you, Vidisha. Um, first of all, um, I just wish that all the colleagues and all our uh, partners, customers who are connected on this call are safe and, uh, you know, maintaining all those, uh, following all the new norms, as we call it. And uh, some of those have expressed by Anand. So Anand, very happy to share this platform with you. First of all, thank you also as you have shared what you have been doing. And it is true that uh, these have been the times when uh, you know uh, we have to really invent very fast and uh, for employees, for customers, and very importantly for communities. Similar to what Ananta said, this has been the priority for us as well. That immediate response to this health crisis was how we can come forward and make sure that we support our employees, we support our customers, and we support our communities. First, for them to be safe. Second, for them to be continuing doing what they have been doing, probably in a new norm and probably using more and more technologies. And I must say that, you know, this time, has really been a time when we have seen that how all these uh, you know pillars of uh, uh, economy the employees the customers uh, the communities or society they have reacted also very fast to the new norms work from home because while some of the companies like we have been practicing it uh, for last few years, but very heartening to see how a lot of uh, those our partners, uh, mid, uh, mid small enterprises, micro enterprises, they have been able to adopt and they have been able to adopt very strongly uh, with the digitization, enforcing the learning of the employees very fast, enforcing the learning of the partners very fast. And this also has been the time when I see the agility has come to its uh, very much on the forefront on uh, uh, the way teams have been able to react, connect with partners, connect with customers, uh, come on on digital webinars. And I must say that when I look at the number of customers we have connected in these time, which goes to more than 25,000 plus. Thanks to all the partners, customers who are very receptive of coming on to these new norms. And thanks to also the technologies and uh, Microsoft uh, Teams platform we have been using aggressively. Thanks to availability of these technology and the teams coming forward to support us. That this has really accelerated the way uh, training was done, way the digital connect was done, way probably, you know, we were interacting with the customer and it has brought innovation to the forefront. I think this is also the time when uh, companies like us have been also very much connected with the community. At Schneider Electric, we launched, uh, you know, Tomorrow Rising Fund. The objective of this fund is to support uh, communities, and especially those communities which were very much vulnerable to this, uh, this particular situation, how we can support them, how we can get the youth back to getting on new skills, and how we can also support the you know, all the countries where we have been operating to the different uh, platform which have been created. Like in India, we have contributed to Prime Minister Care Fund. All these are part of the support to the community. Now, I, I think this is all the time when we have covered ourselves. You know, when I when we started 
uh, into this situation. Before that, there could be anything 10 to 20 touch points physical, which our sales team had with our customers. And this particular situation has helped us accelerate digitization of our this journey of customer connect and sales process, both thanks to the platform which are available, thanks to the new uh, you know, training, new ways of working which our teams have been innovating, and more importantly, thanks to our partner, the customer who have been able to adopt to this particular situation to engage in a different way, to be you know, really looking at how we can increase the productivity of both our, uh, of our customers as well as our teams. So this has really accelerated the digitization process, which I'm sure uh, not only is improving the productivity now, but going to way uh, a long way to define uh, the efficiency of productivity of the whole ecosystem, which is very, very important as we recover from the future. And third, e-commerce platforms. We, as a traditional company, probably we were you know, compared to uh, the you know other organization, we were probably not accelerating that. But this situation has helped us to accelerate our e-commerce platform, both from the point of view of adoption of technology, more and more offers on the e-platform, and also the customers accepting the traditional engineering customer accepting that as a new norm and coming on our e-commerce platform and taking off. Anant has uh, said very uh, you know important thing about the partnership. And I think in the testing times like this, when we have seen that different industries have been impacted differently, we have seen uh, you know, some of the industries like data centers, telecom, healthcare, and uh, uh, some of the energy sector, which have been the backbone of the whole world to go around uh, in these challenging times. These are some seen some uh, green shoots, but equally there are industries uh, which have been impacted uh, in this time. Now, it is also the time when we are looking at this that even the society is redefining the partnerships. You have seen how we are behaving uh, when we are uh, moving in our own social network. We want to remain at a distance, but at the same time, emotionally very much uh, close. We don't want to maintain the uh, you know, things uh, which are following the norm. So these are testing times from the partnership. And what stands out on this is the very strong commitment of the organization on the foundations of these partnerships. In our partnership, it is all about the sustainability. It's all about being more efficient. It's all about being responsible to the climate change. And I think this, when in these testing time, we stand on these principles and we strengthen our partnership on that, then the future even looks more brighter. I think our partnership between Microsoft and Shine Electric has been on these fundamentals, which has tested us in this telling time. And I'm sure going forward, uh, uh, we believe at Shine Electric that uh, this partnership is going to be strengthening more. And with our partnership coming in together with more and more, uh, you know, the uh, the efforts coming from Microsoft, the efforts coming from Schneider, we will be able to create much bigger values to our partners and customers as we move on. And we believe in that, that this kind of partnership bring in much more resilience in our approach to customers, in our offering to customers, and also help the customer to increase the productivity and efficiency of their own business and thus brings in a very strong network of partnership standing on these fundamentals. So again, uh, uh, very much committed for this partnership and uh, very much working together to ensure all our customers and partners are able to get the bigger benefit for their end, end customer, for their business coming out of these uh, situations uh, when we become more and more resilient, more efficient and more responsible. Thank you, Anil. Um, I think that was very well said. I think Anil spoke about respond, rebound, and reimagine. And I think you added two more R's to that, which is resilience and responsible. Um, so I think this was a very, very good insight from both of you where we've covered uh, what the marching orders should be uh, at this current times. Um, Anil, my uh, next question is for you, uh, which is really a question about trust. Um, as we know that organizations must make and have had to make every effort to regain the trust and ensure that co-workers and customers not only feel safe on company premises, uh, but also feel comfortable and confident to be at workspaces. Um, how do you think using technology levers 
uh, uh, will you know make uh, managing this entire situation effective? So your thoughts on that, Anand? So I'm really passionate about this subject and I've spoken enough uh, about it. Uh, and, and I think it's very, very important. It's a defining change of our times uh, that's happening in front of us uh, at this point. I'll refer to it a little bit uh, and, and I'm going to build on that. Uh, I think uh, COVID has uh, led to very large scale transformations uh, in this world of remote everything and people are coming together. They are not completely sure and what they can trust, who they can trust, how they can trust, uh, and, and therefore all of that is kind of, kind of coming together. Let me just uh, unravel this whole trust uh, question into maybe three types uh, of, uh, of uh, trust that I think will play out. Number one is the trust for individuals, people. It's person-centric. Uh, the, their own trust to be safe and secure, their own ability to trust uh, what what they're doing in any kind of work that, that they're uh, going through. The second is the trust for data and digital ecosystems that a number of uh, them are using today and the companies are providing. Even the government is getting involved uh, in providing many of those uh, ecosystems. So really figuring out the security, privacy, transparency uh, in those ecosystems. And the third kind of trust is really even for businesses to work with each other. Uh, if I go back four months, um, the big deals had to be struck by people shaking hands. Uh, and uh, now you're doing virtual handshakes, you're doing virtual signing of agreements. You don't even get to meet uh, uh, somebody before you sign a big, uh, big business deal. Uh, and, and therefore, how do businesses trust each other uh, through uh, this time? That's a different level of trust uh, that we are talking about. So building very strong measures to protect the cybersecurity, privacy, the digital safety will be very crucial uh, in creating uh, these trusted ecosystems. And, and what does that mean? It's really interactive, secure technologies uh, that uh, you will need for everybody for health and safety at work. And Microsoft and Schneider Electric are helping businesses to stay responsive and responsible. Uh, and adaptable uh, to uh, to this change. Uh, we are uh, specifically helping the, the digital capability for multiple uh, ecosystems and companies uh, to create that safe workspace. Uh, in, even in that, the one platform that I would call out is Power Platform. It's a simple ability for anybody to create a, sim a very simple app and many companies have done that to do their crisis management and bring that capability to track safety. I'll give you just one example. You're going to office, uh, uh, you're going back to your workplace. You need first just uh, an app even to figure out, uh, is it safe? And uh, do I want to go? What's happening there? Uh, and some information about yourself to say I'm safe, uh, that uh, it's okay for me uh, to come in. On the other side of the same app is the, the institutional apparatus, uh, which is also kind of figuring out, right, so is it okay uh, for this person to come in and uh, is it okay that uh, this person comes in and we are not creating any risk here uh, for this person uh, to uh, to not remain safe? Uh, so it's, it works both ways. The equation is working both ways uh, from the, the personal individual side and the institutional side. And finally, when the person is inside the facility, this you need companionship. You're doing you're going to the cafeteria, you're going to the restroom, you're going to the uh, to a uh, printer, uh, and so on. And there's multiple facilities that you use inside that uh, uh, that uh, facility uh, and therefore how do you trust every moment that you are spending uh, inside the facility so trust is mul multiple dimensions that we can work through um thanks anand um, that was indeed uh, quite insightful and um, uh, my next question is actually to both of you anand and anil um, talking about trust um, uh, I think, uh, you know, we built a partnership together, Microsoft and Schneider on the basis of trust. And uh, in this specific context, uh, you know, we are uh, coming together in a big way, etc. Uh, what does this partnership really mean? Uh, you know, how can, if I were a customer, uh, how can the customers and organizations benefit from this association of Microsoft and Schneider? Uh, would love to hear your thoughts, and I'm sure everybody in the audience would like to hear your thoughts as well. So, Anand, we go with you. Uh, you tell us your thoughts of what this partnership means to you, and then we'll move to Anand. 
So first up, it is a very, very deep partnership between the two companies over three decades, and it's created distinctive value. And we bring very different capabilities to the to the table together and then create value for the entire ecosystem that we operate in. And I was just uh, resonating with the passion with which Anil spoke about sustainability. Uh, and I think that is the one of the foundational cornerstones uh, of our partnership because we truly share that desire to co-innovate and to create breakthrough solutions uh, to really address the sustainability challenges. Uh, Anil also spoke about digital transformation earlier. Uh, I think harnessing the power of big data, artificial intelligence, IoT especially with a lot of work that Schneider is doing in machine learning to transform both businesses uh, and also to solve customer problems uh, at scale. So what does that really mean? I think in the digital solutions, all the data coming from different sensors at different points uh, coming together to getting stored, processed, analyzed uh, in Azure, uh, and then creating actionable outcomes, which can then be used by all the, the, the technologies to get some real-time visibility, real-time actions, and for efficiency and security. Now, that's something uh, in buildings that's very, very critical. Uh, so I think we bring the, the merging of the two worlds that are needed uh, to make the buildings uh, safe and secure. Uh, and green. Uh, and finally, uh, if I talk about the, the the data and cloud capabilities that are coming together from, from Microsoft, uh, working uh, together with the insights and experience of Schneider, uh, you can really make the future digital, remote, and connected. And, and I'll close with an example. Capgemini in India uh, is a great example of a large-scale organization uh, that is leveraging the smart building solutions from the Schneider Electric and Microsoft combination to truly digitally transform uh, their business and the way they work. So uh, it's always best to look at it from the eyes of a customer. Thanks, Anant. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Capgemini is a, is a great example of uh, instantiation of what you just uh, spoke about. Anil, what are your thoughts on this about the partnership uh, between the two big giants coming together? No, thank you. Uh, and I, I fully endorse what Ananta said, because uh, as I said, the, all the partnership is on fundamental principles and uh, vision which you have. And both the organization are very strongly following that. Uh, we talked about sustainability, climate, customer orientation, digitization, all these are there. Now, when we look from the point of view of uh, how we are bringing this together to, uh, you know, bring uh, really value to our customers, especially in buildings, the Shell Electric uh, ecostructure platform and Microsoft Azure, we are bringing in solutions to our buildings and uh, commercial real estate uh, partners, customers to bring in real time the data, not only the data, but data following strictest norms of cyber security and providing services, which becomes very important and crucial when you have to manage remotely your building. So what does it mean? First, uh, as Anant has also explained, because today the building, uh, you know, stakeholders, uh, the owners, uh, uh, real estate operators, uh, uh, real estate managers, the operators of the building, and more importantly, the occupants uh, of the building, they want the real-time data on occupancies, everybody want to monitor their space, how they are, uh, you know, um, helping us to reduce the inefficiencies of the building and how they are probably able to put in probably the best utilization of the building. All this is uh, in keeping in view uh, that enhanced health, safety and security norms, which are the need of the art. And all that is to uh, make sure that this is available to all the stakeholders in the forms they want. And every uh, you know, stakeholder will need the data in different form. These platforms, the, both our uh, Shell Electric Ecostructure and Microsoft Gear provide that kind of foundation to bring that data to the in the hands of all these stakeholders. Second, I think what is also important that this real-time interaction uh, should help the organizations to manage their buildings more importantly, from the point of view of energy usages, the, uh, the, 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 you know, how they are contributing to the important cause of sustainability, climate, 
uh, tracking carbon uh, emissions, uh, how the renewable energy is being used, and the, to the you know honors how those credits are being used, and overall uh, you know uh, making sure that all the data is available to ensure that they are able to publish, they are able to probably visualize, they are able to track the overall impact on the efficiency of the building, which is as we all seen the COVID has also told us how much it is important for all of us to be responsible to the overall environment, to overall climate, overall sustainability. And that's what everyone will like to contribute and to know that how they are contributing while they are running their businesses. And most importantly is now, when most and most buildings will be remotely managed, remotely controlled, how we can diagnose it in the real time, how we can make it much more predictive rather than product preventive actions. And this is something which these now new technologies, these platforms will be uh, giving, and probably this is more and more ask will be coming in. We have seen that when, whenever we have, you know, digitized a building, whether it's a residential building, a commercial building, or bringing in all these facilities, bringing in more and more monitoring, more and more analysis, to, and, uh, uh, and intelligence into the building to make it much more sustainable and much more, uh, you know, forward looking. We have seen that there is always a uh, overall uh, impact on efficiency, anything between 10% to 30%. And that is what will be very, very important for future stakeholders of these buildings. And uh, thanks to this uh, two platform, uh, Ecostructure Buildings and uh, Microsoft Azure platform, which provide us the, the core of the technology to get all those data which is required for the various stakeholders and present it in the form which the different stakeholders want it and we can provide it uh, efficiently. We can provide it in a predictive form rather than in a preventive form. And we can use this data to ensure that the buildings of the future are designed, keeping in all the analysis which we are bringing in the future. Um, thank you, Anil. I think indeed uh, uh, Schneiderlich's uh, ecostructure for buildings and Microsoft's Azure uh, together is definitely going to make buildings uh, smart to uh, autonomous and I think it's an absolute win-win for all uh, of all our customers um, you know uh, going forward. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, Anil my last question is indeed to you. Um, you know commercial building owners developers have a huge responsibility to help their customers uh, regain trust on the infrastructure something that Anand uh, spoke about earlier. Uh, things like enabling business continuity without compromising on well-being uh, are really the new order of the day, you know. Uh, the question is how will the adoption of digitization and uh, new digital technology help in achieving this? Yeah, I, I think Anand said and I emphasized on that. The experience of the occupants is going to be a very prime factor the way the future of the buildings will be looked at. Let's, uh, you know, when I, and this is experience is all about trust. We see it in our normal life. You have, uh, you know, you have uh, uh, engaged with some vendor in your personal relationship or in personal dealings or in, in uh, when we are uh, dealing officially. Uh, how much trust we have on that, which comes from the point of view of that, how they have been able to give us a very great experience. Now, when we talk of the buildings of the future, imagine that as an employee, if I'm coming to a building and as we are in this situation, we want more and more contactless operation. I should be able to, you know, enter the building. I should be able to enter the, uh, you know, lift uh, contactless uh, and I should not be touching any points to give, make me feel safe make me feel uh, that this uh, building is uh, very much uh, aligned with all the norms which are required to manage the current situation. And also I am able to manage my space myself. I'm able to book the space, I move on. And then said as I'm moving within my space, I should be able to visualize how much I can, uh, you know, where I can go, when can I go into the canteen, when I go, go into the common areas and all, because I can get the visualization that I will be able to follow uh, the distancing, social distancing, I'll be able to follow all the socks which have been put in place. I think these are these are the future buildings which have to put a lot of emphasis on well-being of the occupants. And this, when we look at this, how this can be brought in, this is the technology. This is the way we will adopt 
all that platform, all the technology, the ex on one side, experience of all these uh, intelligence, which is available on the various devices which we use today, and the other side intelligence with the core management of the technologies which, which make these uh, buildings operate. When we are able to bring these together on a common platform, we can give them a seamless experience of uh, of being confident and being trustworthy of all that uh, building with their uh, space which they are using it now when i look at this some of those things which are very important is first the all these uh, you know the way we move into the building the way we occupy the building with the way we use building behind that is very strong factors of the infrastructure which creates this and i will put the energy and the asset management in the building is a very important uh, pillar of that. I will say the overall, uh, you know, when we look at the operations uh, today, we will see sometime we have a silo part still in the buildings for the operation point of view, how we are making it a unified operation, how we are making it an integrated operation, thanks to this technological integration. And more importantly, also, uh, it all has to start from the point how we are using the real time data and uh, from the past experiences using it for the future building design and designing the buildings which are i will say uh, i will more smarter as we call it autonomous building because we have been always talking of the smart building and now we are going to the next phase of the smarter and all this time we will have to keep in view that how this experience which we have been taking from the way we have been using building, the data which we are connecting, analytics on that, algorithms of those data, how are different parts uh, of the, you know, the, the way the buildings are used, how that data is used so that we can really bring in uh, the capability where we can monitor these buildings 24 by 7 remotely, we can have this building contactless, we can bring in the well-being of the uh, occupants of these buildings, give all that data to them so that they can themselves monitor it uh, and uh, feel confident. These are some of the you know characteristics which are there for autonomous building. Now the good part is that uh, with two large organizations like Schneider Electric and Microsoft, which have been forefront of the digitization of their respective part, Microsoft bringing in digital platform, we have driven all the digitization processes uh, of the infrastructure of buildings, infrastructure, and any industry factor with our ecostructure platform. When we bring in together, we can make sure that you know the, all the occupants, the stakeholders, and the customers can count on us that we provide you a, a, a technology, we provide you a solution, we provide you a platform which can keep your building, uh, you know, be ready for uh, future, be autonomous and we bring in extra value to you through the trust which your customer bring in these technologies. So that's how we have to look the future of the buildings and the future of autonomous buildings as we move forward. Thank you, Anil. And, uh, uh, thank Alicia, you, Anil. I'll have to drop off. I know awesome. I'm running very late because okay. uh, I was supposed to start another event at 11.30. No problem, Anil. Uh, thank you very much for all your insights and great having you here. And, thank um, you so much. So, thank you, Anil. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, folks, what we will do is uh, we will continue with the session. We have two very strong presentations uh, ahead of us and we will do the Q&A right in the end. Um, so keep your questions flowing. Uh, just in case there are some questions uh, we can't answer because of paucity of time, we will definitely respond to you by email. Yeah. So, um, Anil, thank you very much, um, you know, for your uh, great insights. And I, I agree with you that both the companies coming together will actually help us uh, make buildings uh, truly autonomous uh, and, and look at all the all the future issues that we're looking at. Um, so with that, I now uh, pass it on uh, i i have great privilege in getting um two uh, 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 thought leaders again from microsoft and schneider electric who will actually uh, walk us through uh, a presentation to talk about the subject uh, in specificity i have great pleasure in uh, welcoming uh, mr guillaume estegesi who is the worldwide lead smart places and smart building for microsoft and we have mr sanjay sudhakaran who is the Vice President of Digital Energy. Um, so welcome, gentlemen, and uh, we are looking forward to your deep dive presentations uh, for the next 20 minutes. Over to you. Thank you, Bidisha. I hope I'm audible. Yes, all good. OK, so uh, without, uh, I think we are running a little bit behind schedule, but I'll try and make up for that. Uh, 
So what we're talking about right now is that we have been doing smart buildings for quite some time over a decade. I think probably by now. How do we move from that uh, situation to a smart building to an autonomous building? So let's go on to the next slide, OK? So some of these trends, I will not go into too much of detail. Uh, all of you know about it. You have heard of it many times. Globalization, we are building probably one Hong Kong every eight weeks today, uh, and it will continue to be in the future. We have a lot of risk around cybersecurity as we are going more and more digital. 67% of the CEOs have put digital as one of the top three strategy agendas that they have. So we are going to have more and more IoT and more and more digital. Uh, buildings consume more than 40% of the global uh, electricity consumption. So it's going to be a huge energy guzzler. And we all know that smart, efficient green buildings command 7% more premium over traditional buildings. So uh, I think uh, sustainability is definitely on the agenda. One point which I'd like to highlight more here is the war for talent. I think we spend probably one rupee on rentals. I would say as an example, we spent almost three rupees trying to maintain those premises and we probably staff them with almost uh, 10 times of that almost 300 rupees we spend on the employees that we uh, have in those premises. So human capital is the most important element and well being of that human resources is one of the topmost agendas that we have today in in front of us and that's going to be a bigger and bigger trend. So believe it or not, well being is going to be a subject by itself as important as digitization. With that, let me go over to the next slide. So what have we done in the past decade? We have done a lot of stuff in the past decade to make our buildings more intelligent. We have uh, put in discrete systems which may or may not talk to each other. A lot of IoT devices, a lot of softwares, a lot of data because we felt that data is the crux of, to solve our problem. Data is the need to solve our problem. Here I would like to invite my friend Guillaume from Microsoft to share his views also on the subject. Guillaume, over to you. Thank you, Sanjay. Um, can you hear me OK? Very well. All right, thank you. Yeah, so I think this uh, you, you outlined that very well. I think um, you know what we're seeing right now on the screen is uh, just a, probably a, a broader subset of all uh, the scenarios that we can attach to now smart buildings. And, and, and of course, you know, if you extend this to a smart precinct or a smart city, um, it's staggering to me that you know um, we even recently worked with a customer that had about 110 scenarios and when that building went live that building generates terabytes of data daily and so you know if you look at all of this um, uh, and, and you know the scenarios keep building on top of each other you realize that and if you go to the next slide i think will be very clear is that you know the the data potential data cows uh, chaos that that will result of this is 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 going to be a determining factor, right? Whether you can make sense of the data, in which case you need as much data as possible, and if you cannot make sense of the data, then of course you know it's uh, it's simply you know there has no value. Um, and in fact, we see that, and I'm sure um, you know all across the industry where sometimes you go on board a building and and they have say data from a BMS, right? But unfortunately. It wasn't. It was never structured, and it's not very usable. Uh, and so I think you know the um, the important thing is, you know, what do we do with all the data? How can we process the data? How can we make sense of it? You know, in a way that will turn it into actions. So if you go to the next slide, I think the answer of all of that is is really centered around cloud, and that's because you know with this amount of data you're going to get from a building. Uh, there is no way uh, human processing is going to be able to do uh, anything with it. Uh, and there is very little chance that, you know, on-premise processing will work for some scenarios, but will be very limiting moving forward, right? A lot of times customers ask, well, how can I future-proof my building, right? Well, you don't future-proof the structure. You don't future-proof the IoT devices and, and sensors. But what you future-proof is your platform, what you future proof is your architecture. And so 
you know, this will continue to evolve, um, you know, as, as, a, as a cloud provider, we make sure that our services constantly evolve. So if you look at AI and machine learning and big data, uh, which are outlined here, uh, you know, all that we provide keeps getting better and better and better and a new service will be added. So when you when you do a smart building or smart buildings project and, and with, you know, uh, with our partners like like Schneider, um, you know, the solutions will keep getting better, you know, as, as you move forward. And that's how you sort of future proof, uh, you know, your building. I think that's a, that's a point that is often asked and I thought was uh, interesting to lean in. Uh, and so cloud, it's not a question of, you know, cloud, cloud or it's, you know, you cannot do this kind of compute here without cloud, uh, cloud power, right? And with that comes the responsibility uh, to have, you know, a very, very secure environment, right? So cybersecurity is at the core and center of it, uh, whether you're securing your IoT device at the device level, but of course you're securing the entire communication, you know, from the device to the cloud. Uh, you know, some building information you'd say is not really critical. Uh, you know, bunch of temperature and you know, and 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 similar type of data isn't really something that uh, uh, is 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 worse. You know, having a high level of protection, but but now we're getting into scenarios that touch people. You know, and then that that really implies that your your platform should be secure from uh, end to end. So. Uh, you know, in our partnership, I think that's one of the big elements is, is that cybersecurity. So I think I will, at that point, you know, um, hand it over to, to Sanjay again, who's going to explain, well, it's cloud, but, but you know, what are the solutions uh, doing using cloud? And I think that's where getting into the, the Schneider uh, specific solution. So Sanjay, back to you. Thank you, Guillaume. And we go over to the next slide. OK, now here is what we have on offer, which is uh, a little bit different from the traditional building management systems. We have a host of advisory services, which is like the building advisor, the power advisor, the workplace advisor, the asset advisor and the resource advisors. These are all cloud based advisory services all hooked up to a service bureau in Bangalore, combining artificial intelligence of machine with the knowledge of human intelligence uh, backed by data scientists. Close to 30,000 assets being monitored across the globe, 1,000 sites across 19 countries. This is the kind of infrastructure that Schneider has developed locally in India to serve the globe. And we would like to present three of these advisors, the building advisor, the power advisor, and workplace advisor in a little more detail as we go forward. Anybody who's interested in the rest of the offers can obviously connect with us and get hold of the rest of the stuff that they need to know, but we'll give you a high level picture of three advisors to start with. Go over to the next slide, please. So building advisor is the artificial uh, intelligence for a traditional BMS system. The traditional BMS system, what it does is it gives you a lot of alarms. It leaves it to the operator of the BMS system or a host of technicians at site to solve the HVAC related problems in whichever priority they feel convenient about. What this advisory service does is using 800 plus algorithms, it gives you a dashboard which says that, hey, go and solve this problem first and solve this problem second and this problem third. And this is the kind of savings or additional comfort that you will generate for your occupants in the descending order of priority. So it helps you prioritize. It helps you cut the clutter of the data or the data chaos which Guillaume spoke about. So this is an artificial intelligence for your BMS system which really allows you to bring in productivity. So what's in it for the end user? The end user's comfort goes up, his costs come down and his uptime goes up. What is in it for the service provider, say an HVAC servicing agency, for him the costs go down because you can use more of predictive analysis to make sure that the chiller compressor or the chiller, the HU motor does not burn out. OK, and what's in it for Schneider? Schneider is obviously a global leader in analytics on the cloud. So what we do is that we have these assets under maintenance under a subscription model, which allows you to spend money as you uh, save. So it's not a capital intensive model. It's an OPEX intensive model. So with a predefined ROI. 
Now let's go on to the next advisory model that we have that is called as the power advisor. Now we know that we have been chasing efficiency in buildings for a very long time till now. So we have invented LEDs, we have invented variable frequency drive and all these non-linear loads, what they do is they add to your harmonics of the building. Harmonics is a silent killer, just like blood pressure and diabetes are lifestyle diseases which are silent killers. Harmonics is a silent killer. You do not know where they crop up and what they do to your body. OK, so what these harmonics do to your electrical system is hidden. They reduce the life of your electrical equipment. They reduce the uptime. They create distortion in your systems. And at the end of the day, what you're left with is an inefficient building which does not meet up to your standards. So time analytics make sure that all your electrical assets are monitored and you get a prioritization as to what you need to do first and what you need to do next. Let's go on to the next one, which is the workplace advisor. Combined with the Engage app, we spoke about well-being. Now, did you know that 40% of your employees spend at least 30 minutes a day trying to find a meeting room? That's bad. That's lack of productivity. 1% increase in productivity of human capital can actually pay for all your energy bills. That is a staggering amount of savings that productivity of employees generate. So here is a program or here is a uh, analytics which helps people find conference rooms, navigate through offices, through maps, uh, find things easily, make sure that there's the right CO2 maintained, there are the toxicity level in the air is uh, good enough and not harmful to the employees. How can we maintain social distancing? Which areas need are a little more crowded than the other areas which need to be sanitized, which are all very important in today's world. As we go through this pandemic, how can we maintain a certain defined threshold of social distancing within offices? How can we assign hot desks? In what, in what priority do we assign them, etc.? Everything can be done through this particular advisor. And also along with the Engage app, a lot of other services like finding the right food in the canteen to your bus services, everything can be integrated. So employee well-being is at the heart of this advisory service. Going on to the next slide, to be very short, I'd like to talk about one of our esteemed customers, Caps Gemini, which both Anil and Anand spoke about in the beginning, and how they have leveraged all these analytics and all these cloud-based platforms into the central command center at Bangalore to monitor their assets worldwide and give them both productivity of building operations, well-being, and operational efficiency. With that, I come to the end of the presentations and over to you, uh, Bidisha, once again. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, I think uh, the first 20 minutes was about setting the context of our partnerships. And I think this was this was really good because we went a couple of levels down and talking about really this, the solutions and the products that are there uh, as two companies. So um, we have, uh, um, you know, we'd like to now open it up for uh, Q&A. Um, I'm requesting my colleague Amit to curate some of yeah. the questions and uh, I believe I believe I have the first question which I'm going to uh, um, I think this can be for both Sanjay and for Guillaume. Uh, the question is from your experience in the industry so far with customers, what do you think are some of the most important factors when considering the implementation of smart and autonomous building solutions? Guillaume and Sanjay, you all can maybe take turns to, to go over it. Sure, sure. Um, OK, I'll, I'll go first and then, uh, you know, I'll let uh, Sanjay come in. Um, you know, from my point of view, I think what's, what's very important is, um, you know, one of the probably common common mistake that that have been seeing is um, trying to lead with technology. Right. You can't it, it really when you're, you're trying to implement smart buildings uh, solution, it has to be driven by business. Now, this isn't a technology exercise. This should not be driven by 
you know, an IT department because they have budget to buy IoT devices. This should be, you know, this should be a fundamentally a business decision, whether it's around um, sustainability, uh, whether it's around, you know, employee productivity. But but you need to have a business decision maker. This needs to be a business driver, and any smart building solution you want to implement has to have a business rationale. It seems obvious, but in many cases, you know, it's you know, customer will come and will ask Microsoft or Schneider, what can your technology do for me? That is the wrong question. It's what do you want to do mostly for the people? What do you want to do in sustainability? What do you want to do in terms of the experience of the people that will walk in and out of your building? What do you want to achieve? You know, what is your mission? What is your vision? And I think it's very important to recenter uh, the question around this uh, rather than having endless technology discussions because it will always change. Right, thanks. I think uh, I have a thanks, Guillaume. Uh, I think the next question, um, Sanjay, you'll probably be able to uh, give us some insights on this. And the question is uh, looking at the present pandemic situation that uh, we have, uh, how do you think technologies uh, can create, can contribute in this building space? and? Uh, how easy or difficult it is to deploy these solutions? So I think, uh, Bidisha, I think we are learning uh, more and more during this pandemic mm -hmm. how to do this better. If you really see, it's all about uh, huh? how to troubleshoot your building, right? Yes. How to troubleshoot your building yes. without actually dispatching somebody. Uh, so what, uh, um, sorry, yeah. Sanjay, uh, can I please request uh, everybody to go on mute except Sanjay and Guillaume? Thank Bye. you. Physics okay, um, I think uh, I, I'm not sure who it is, but you need to please keep yourself in mute. Someone's yes. talking of physics to give a cue. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I think it's all about not dispatching people. So, for example, we are always tempted to say that, hey, uh, even in your house, if the electrical system is not working, we're tempted to say that, hey, why don't we call the electrician and let him figure out what needs to be done? The whole thing about contactless maintenance and uh, uh, intelligent facility management is all about not getting people into the building unnecessarily. So that's what the building advisor does, right? It solves 80% of the building issues remotely without having to dispatch a technician. So that's what we need to do. Uh, many of the times it's false alarm. Many of the times it can be fixed by the people who are already there in the building. So you really need not test, dispatch somebody. So that brings down your cost, improves your productivity, and also adds to contactless maintenance. Thanks, um, thanks, Sanjay, and uh, thanks, Guillaume. I think we are on top of the hour. Uh, I think uh, you know to just be sensitive to everybody's time who's joined in. Um, I don't I, I keep your questions coming. Like I said, we will try our best to respond to your email. Uh, but for this session, I think uh, we're done with Q&A. Any last uh, thoughts, Sanjay? Any last last thoughts, Guillaume, before we wrap it up? I'll let Sanjay go first this time. Yeah, I think it's all about running. If I were a facilities director of a corporation, I would say that how can I build, run my building from Starbucks? That's all that I have to say about contactless maintenance and intelligent and autonomous buildings. I think that that that's very true. I think you know. Um, I think to me, you know, what was you know before COVID, what was something that was meant to optimize facilities management and 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 remote management, which is still true, has now become more of an imperative. So I think. Uh, hopefully, um, and more and more of these facilities managers are going to look into that. Into you know what, you can address some of the post-COVID situation as well as as running your FM operations in a very very uh, optimized way. So I think it benefits everybody. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Sanjay and Guillaume. Yeah. It was a it was indeed a pleasure to host this uh, webinar. Um, I think. Um, you know, between Anil and Anand, just to wrap up, they spoke about how businesses can, uh, you know, get into the mode of respond, rebound, reimagine, responsible, be responsible and, re and be resilient. Um, and I think uh, Guillaume and Sanjay very effectively spoke about how remote maintenance is really the order of the day. And like I like what uh, Sanjay said, that sit in a Starbucks, sip a cup of ca cappuccino and run your, and run your building. You know, it's as easy as that. Um, so thank you. I really enjoyed hosting this. I know there are lots and lots of questions coming in, but we can't answer all of them right now. But like I said, please send them to us and we will definitely um, get back to you. 
thank you uh, very much for attending this webinar or this fireside chat. Stay, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.